Welcome back to The Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. I tell you, I, I like that song, and sometimes it's humorous when we use it, but you know, right now it's kind of got me stressed out. I'm beginning to think it may be the end of the world as we know it, because uh, there's some strange stuff going on in the geopolitical front. Uh, Russia is uh, really come to realize how, how truly Jimmy Carter-esque Barack Obama is. Um, he, uh, he, uh, you know, I don't, to just refresh your memory, back in the uh, 1970s, 13 countries fell to communism in the four year stint of uh, Jimmy Carter. It's the biggest expansion of communism, uh, since the end of World War II. Well, I think we're about to see the biggest expansion of Russian imperialism. And I'll remind people before the, um, before the Soviet flag, they flew the Russian imperial flag it meant imperial you know and people all of their neighbors hated that flag they feared that flag well guess what they got reason to fear again and so it's interesting to see on the geopolitical political front what's going on there they've got the perfect leader they've got the neville chamberlain type poised and waiting uh to, to simply be uh, slapped around by uh by someone who i think is probably the most politically savvy the most knowledgeable and confident on the world stage out there which is Putin. I mean, you can like dislike him all you want. I mean, he's kind of like an evil character from a James Bond movie, but the guy knows his politics. He has a sense of what's happening. He's real world. You know, frankly, that's one of the advantages of being a dictator. You don't really have to worry about political wins. But your thoughts about it, uh, Sigmund? Well, yeah, and he is KGB. You know, those guys uh, studied us very carefully. They know how we think. They know how we act. They know the ins and outs. They probably have a lot of spies quite frankly, in the Obama administration and Congress. You know, they they didn't, just because the USSR went away doesn't mean that uh, everything about Russia and their techniques went away. And they know how we think. And quite frankly, he's he's got uh, he's got Obama's number, doesn't he? Oh, he does. I mean, I can't think of anyone except for maybe Jimmy Carter, who I would perceive as a bigger pushover than Obama. Well, I always said Obama is the second coming of J.C., and that does not mean Jesus Christ. That is Jimmy Carter. He is literally, it's all over again. Uh, and quite possibly worse, because he's so much more arrogant than Jimmy Carter ever was. That's true. That's true. Uh, Carter was m- simply incompetent. <laughs> well, plus the media, the media, because you know Barack Obama is at least half black, they, uh, they really don't want anybody to, uh, to speak out against him for fear of being called racist. You know, That's bigots. right. And Jimmy Carter never had that going for him. He was a he was a white redneck. So, you know, yeah, he's they're, like they're, the, they're he's okay like the perfect guy out. for the media to beat up on. And, yeah. and of course, he got a pass compared to any Republican. But still, well, uh, he he uh, he definitely didn't have the uh, Teflon that a Barack Obama, Barack Obama enjoys. Yeah, and you know, back to the whole Russia thing. Yes, during two thousand eight, uh, South Ossetia, you know, in Georgia, was invaded by Putin. Uh, that was during Bush's last term, last year in office, actually. But here's the difference. As far as I can remember, uh, there was no Democrat. I mean, there was no Republican-led Congress. Um, you know, Bush was really on his way out at that point. It started in, in I want to say, spring or summer of 2008. And um, and I don't think the political will was there. We were already fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. Not to mention we were fighting a, a potential Great Depression, too. That's right. The recession, the, uh, economic to kick uh, in. crap hit the fan, you know, and we had regional problems with fires and bad weather, including here in Houston. There was a lot. I kit. I mean, it was like we were pretty, we were pretty fatigued on a lot of different fronts. There was a lot going on. The political will simply was not there for us to uh, start saber rattling against uh, Russia, and uh, and now in that time we've seen all of our enemies basically strengthening around the world. And we've seen, um, you know, I think it's hilarious that Obama went to um, campaign on this message of of making America greater in the eyes of those around the world so that they would respect us again. And listen, because of his foreign policy mistakes and basically his, his uh, feckless leadership, we have probably reached a, a low that hasn't been seen in over a century in terms of 
uh, lack of respect for our nation. Russia, spy ship makes surprise visit to Havana. This just happened on uh, February 27th. A Russian spy ship slipped into Havana Bay for an unannounced visit during a period of turmoil in the Ukraine and displays of military strength elsewhere in the world. The Viktor Leonov SSV-175, part of the Vishnia class of intelligence ships, quietly entered Cuban waters earlier this week and was docked at a cruise ship terminal on Thursday, its crew casually taking in the view of the old colonial section of the Cuban capital as passersby gawked. Now, does that mean something, or is that just a tourist attraction? I mean, I think Russia is making a very bold statement there. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think what uh, was their answer? Yeah, you know, and during the during the 1970s, uh, Suriname, um, Nicaragua, all those countries that became moved from non-aligned to essentially extensions, annexes for the Soviet Union, they were all in Latin America. There's always been an interest to get as big of a foothold as possible. I don't know anyone in U.S. history, with the exception of of a Carter who has a more uh, Neville Chamberlain worldview of foreign policy, the secular humanist, everyone's basically good, everyone's going to act in their own self-interest. Citizens guess of the what? world. guess what? When you're a dictator, you, your self-interest is to do whatever the heck you want. You right. care less. And what's interesting about this is that, is that we're in debt, right? We're in debt at $17 trillion. Uh, most of Europe is in huge debt. Uh, many countries even further along than what we are in our our, our debt, uh, you know, uh, positioning. And so what we've done is that we have so stolen from future generations that we're all on the brink of economic ruin on so many different fronts that we can't even preserve liberty for future generations because we don't have the financial resources to stand up to someone like Putin, who, by the way, has had balanced bu- budgets in Russia. They don't they don't go into debt in Russia. They're in a very different postured position. Uh, they're debt so they're ratio. not doing the bullets or butter anymore. They're in a very different position. They're in a position, you know, thanks to energy largely. Uh, right. They may have, they have deficits, but they nothing oh. compare to, to uh, what we have. And so we're not even able to – we have stolen for future a- generations, and now we're not even in a position to protect future generations because of our uh, our policies. And frankly, we don't even value liberty anymore. Well, We've taught all these people uh, for generations both here and in Europe to value peace – more than freedom. Right. Well, here's the thing. and they, they, The old axiom, freedom isn't free. It's true. It's truism. Uh, it, it does cost money. We have to project power. If we don't, uh, then, you know, if we don't project power, then that means with all these countries, all these countries like in Egypt and, and uh, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, they value and they respect might, military might and strength. If we don't project that, then that means they won't respect us. That means they will act out against us. So, you know, with this Arab Spring that turned into a frost really quickly, uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, Iran's going to step in. There's going to be a power vacuum. They're going to have a lot more influence. Iran and Russia are chummy, and uh, and you're going to see a lot more influence of Islam in the South American countries. You're going to see it in Africa. You're going to see it in the poor countries uh, and they're gonna they're gonna really, you know, partner up with China with Russia. So you're gonna see a new axis of evil, but it's gonna be a lot broader than it was when it was just North Korea, Iran, and uh, Iraq or whoever you know during the whichever Bush bad years. guy you want to pull out of and, your hat. And the problem is that now they're they're really in a much greater position of strength, while we're in a much greater position of weak, weakness with. Uh, Hegel and uh, and the Obama administration cutting John Kerry wanting to cut yeah but wanting <laughs> we're behind to, the people of uh, Ukraine just like we were behind the Syrian people yeah we're yeah. behind we're behind them pushing them further and further towards Russia but you know and by the way don't don't confuse the two I was against action in Syria we better take action here I'm telling you you're going to see the entire eastern former eastern bloc be part of the Soviet Union again Imperial R- Russia in no time well so by the way they do have debt but compare debt our debt is over. 100% of our GDP is now o- equals right. over 100%. Theirs is 8.4% yeah. percent of their GDP. Yeah. I mean, that, I wish I wish we had it so bad. Well, like I said before I came in here, I wish uh, Putin would go ahead and take over the White House because it's just, you know, he, he is a much stronger leader. I don't like the guy, by the way, but he's a much stronger leader than what we have here at home. We need strong leadership. And when you have all these things going on all over the world and yet, we're cutting our military to pre-World War II levels? Yeah. That is insanity. 
That is insanity. And, and the Russians are getting stronger. And what does that mean, Kevin? You want to hear something? Maybe you'll remember this. I must break you. You remember that? Uh-uh. Rocky IV? What Ivan, Ivan Drago. Yeah, what do you say? I must break you. I must break you. That's Putin to, to uh, Obama. And guess what? What's that? Obama ain't no Rocky. That's for sure. Very, very sobering, folks. You better contact your congressman and tell them that, uh, you know what, they need to put pressure on this administration to hold Russia accountable. Because I'm telling you, Ukraine is only the beginning. I'm telling you, it's only the beginning. I'm Kevin Price. When we come back, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here can be found over there at usdatareview.com. And you're listening to my favorite radio show, The Price of Business. Of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world. I feel fine.